Hey everybody, thank you for dropping into DeFi Divi. My name is Matthew, welcome. Glad you are here. On this channel, we like to talk about simple crypto passive income strategies that are implemented on blockchains with utility that have use cases and solve business problems. As always, none of this is financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. And if you like this type of content, give me a follow at Twitter over at DeFi Divi or subscribe to the channel. All right, let's get into this. Today, Twitter was buzzing with tweets about how MetaMask is tracking our data. They know who we are. They're going to sell our data like Web2 companies do. And so I wanted to dig into this because I did feel a little concerned. I started looking into other wallets. Some of the wallets recommended. I went directly to their privacy policies because even though in the tweets it said this wallet doesn't track our data, you go right into the privacy policy and you'll, you learn, oh, yes, they actually track my ad IP address. Something to think about. It's crazy out there. But we're going to dive into this deeper. We're going to dive into the difference between consensus, Infura, and MetaMask, so you understand what's going on. We're going to dive into what, what information can be gleaned from your IP address, which is the actual piece of data that's being tracked. And then we're going to talk about some solutions so you feel better earning that crypto passive income, not worry about stressing out, people tracking where you live, people knowing your name, people knowing who you are and how much money you have, and people not selling your data. Because that's all just what we're trying to get away from here in Web3. No one likes this. No one likes to see this stuff coming down. So first, let's talk about uh, Consensus, Infura, and MetaMask. So MetaMask is an open source wallet. The code base is completely open source. Any developer can go uh, to the GitHub repository. Uh, you just go to git, 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 github.com forward slash MetaMask, and you have all of the code ready available for you to audit yourself and inspect. Now, don't get me wrong. This is no simple task. There's a lot of code here. Probably would take a couple people a while to get through all this and try to figure out what's going on, but it's doable. So if there was something going on fishy with MetaMask, if there was something fishy going on with MetaMask, developers could audit that directly themselves and see what's going on. That's a positive. MetaMask is open source. Consensus is a business, a centralized business, and Infura is an application owned by Consensus. Consensus also now owns the open source wallet MetaMask. So you have this centralized business, that owns the application in Fura and owns MetaMask. You can see all of Consensus's products right here on their website, the Consensus product suite. They have CodeFi, Diligence, Infura, MetaMask, Quorum, and Truffle. So for you Web3 developers, Consensus probably tracks what you're building as well. They're a business. It's part of their business model. They're tracking it for whatever reasons. Now Consensus is saying they're not going to monetize this data, which they talk about in an article I'll briefly go over. But this is, this is basically the lay of the land, what you need to know. So now that we have that cleared up, Consensus updated their privacy policy recently to say that MetaMask users who connect to Infura through MetaMask, we are going to track your IP through Infura and we're going to store it along with your wallet addresses. Why? Because they have reasons. They're saying that for monetization, maybe it's regulation that's coming up, maybe the fact that this is a centralized business. Now we have regulators that can come directly after someone and say, well, we need to know, we need some sort of KYC. So let's start with addresses attached to an IP address. So now that we have that out of the way, we know who's tracking what. It's basically... MetaMask, when it's connected to Infura, your IP and wallet addresses are going to the business called Consensus. So there are uh, multiple solutions that can be implemented for that. We'll talk about that in a bit. But first, let's just go over what, what can be gleaned from an IP address, just the IP address itself. And really, if you look it up, you'll come across articles and, and sites like Quora here, where you can get data from a plethora of developers. I'm a developer myself, and I know there are, both in Python and JavaScript, there are methods you can call to pull a lot of information about who's making the request to an application. I can get your IP address. I can get all kinds of request data, but nothing really that personal. And this site will tell you what it is pretty accurately. But basically, here's one of my favorite answers right here. And I quote, what kind of information can be obtained by knowing an IP address 
And I quote, not much. If you are on Internet One, it's pretty useless. You may be able to figure out which ISP the target is using and not all and not at all accurate position, but that's useless when the person uses VPN proxies or onion routing. If you are a local area network, then you can use the address to access various protocols, for which, of course, you would need the target's credentials. For example, when two Windows systems are on the same Wi-Fi, are on Sam's Wi-Fi, and one of them has sharing files enabled, you can access them from another system in the network. The IP address in and of itself does not give away any any info, but it can be used to find exploits of the target by scanning, porting, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I use a VPN. I have started using those a while ago because basically it's a, there's a lot of hackers out there and you don't want them to know <laughs> where you're at and, and, and it just makes it harder for them. Like hackers are smart, they're good, and all you're doing is you're making them jo their, your job, their job harder. And so basically right now, if you type in to Google, uh, you know, what is my IP address? common quote it should come right up if you start typing it ip address and then google will just pull it up right here and so this is what google says my ip address is so i copy that and then i paste this into here the site what is my ip address and it kind of lets you know the information they can get and basically that is the ip address also known as the host name and a uh, rough, rough geographical location of where you are. And so am I in Seattle? Am I in Washington right now? No. I'm using a VPN. I'm nowhere near there. I'm far away. And so that's it. You just want to make it hard. But as you can see, there's nothing else here that is really useful for even an ad agency. It's just like, okay, we just know this computer is in this location, but they're not really there and it has these Ethereum wallets attached to it. This is data that a website like Etherscan could probably also get if they wanted to. And you can open up your network tab and see the cookies that are being dropped, and you can see what's in local storage, and it'll help you assess what's going on. And for you nerds out there, there are also ways that you can see what requests MetaMask is sending with your data, the data it includes. And I looked, and it's not much. I'll do maybe a little quick demo at the end. It's kind of kind of cryptic gobbledygook if you're not a developer. And even as a developer, I would have to probably do some reverse engineering through the GitLab repo, which I pointed out earlier, to figure out exactly what's going on. So what's the solution here? I see a lot of people talking about changing wallets. So let's talk about solution. I see three, and I'm going to talk about each one, pros and cons. There is one, use a VPN. There's two, change wallets. And three, change your RPC endpoint to something else besides Infura. So let's talk about the first one, What using a VPN. So some VPNs will track your activity. You have to be careful there. Right now I am trusting a centralized entity called ExpressVPN. They say they do not track activity. I think they say it's impossible. So, uh, but it is trust, it's not a decentralized VPN. And <clears throat> why am I using them? It was easy to set up. I'm not really, I don't have anything to hide except for I'm just kind of hiding from hackers. So I'm not really too concerned about a complete decentralized VPN solution, although I might switch to that just because it removes more trust. The decentralized VPN solutions are a little bit more complicated to set up, but I I have a feeling I'll probably switch to that ultimately because this is trustless technology. It's why it's here. So I'd rather not trust ExpressVPN eventually one day. I probably won't. I don't even know if I really do now. Hard to say. But I use them. It's been working pretty well so far. So just when you're looking and researching your VPN, look at if they track activity. I believe I heard NordVPN does track activity. ExpressVPN says they do not. Some of the decentralized ones say they do not as well. So VPN is one solution. Now let's talk to the other solution, which is changing wallets. Okay, it's funny. When I was on Twitter, I think I mentioned this earlier, people were saying, oh, MetaMask is tracking. We need to switch to use different wallets. I'm switching to this wallet. And then I kind of I clicked on it to check it out. And I went, okay, cool. I'm going to check this out. Started reading about what people said about the wallet, which looked great. And then I'm like, well, I need to go, I want to look at this privacy policy too. And then I clicked on the privacy policy, dug in, and I saw the exact same, pretty much the exact same thing. Like, we don't track anything, just your IP address. I'm like, okay, so 
You, you, in other words, some of you are still tracking my data. So you got to be careful if you switch wallets, make sure you look at the privacy policy of your hot wallet. And on the subject of wallets, let's add this to the solution here. These are hot wallets. MetaMask is a hot wallet. All these other browser and software wallets, these should not be your primary self-custody solution. Self-custody goes into cold storage. I like a Trezor. You want to click the affiliate link. That's great. Here's why I like it. They open source everything, including their operating system. Now, other the other couple big ones, one other big one that I'm not going to name any names. Do the research yourself. A lot of YouTubers like them because they have a great affiliate program, probably. It, it, they don't open source their operating system. And some people think that's not necessary. I've went and dug into big threads on why I think one of the co-founders says no one's going to do that research anyways into the open sourced operating system. They don't know what's happening there. And it's, it's, it's pointless to open source it because it doesn't make anything more secure. And I disagree. I, I would like to see the, uh, you know, it's kind of like Windows, Windows versus Linux, right? Which one do you think is more secure? I would, some people would say Windows and the, the, oper, the operating system is not completely open source. Others would say Linux because it is and it's just community driven. So I like a completely open sourced operating system and Trezor does that. So that is my cold storage solution. A couple other ones I'm looking into as well for other products that won't work on Trezor, other uh, cryptocurrencies I should say. But keep that in mind that either, in any case, no matter what you go with, a cold storage wallet should be your primary self-custody solution. These hot wallets, you just put your DeFi money in there. You put your, your you know, your, your, the money you're going to use for crypto passive income. You deploy that to decentralized finance protocols. You stake through it. And you collect those rewards. And then just periodically, once a month, when you upgrade your firmware on your cold storage device, maybe dump some of that crypto passive income into your cold storage if you're ready to not put, if, you, if you're done putting some of it to work. Or if you're going to move it, you know, maybe you're going to move it back into your bank account, into fiat currency, whatever. But don't use MetaMask as your primary self-custody solution. Um, and then finally, let's see, we talked about VPN. We've talked about changing wallets. Oh, now we're going to talk about changing the RPC endpoint in your MetaMask wallet to point to something else. That is not too hard to do. Here we are talking about the Ethereum network. So you click MetaMask and... This is on Brave. I don't use this one normally, uh, just for testing and stuff like this. So you go up to here, you click Networks, and then you click Add Network, and that'll take you to the, the uh, General Settings page. And then you click down this left-hand navigation, you go to Networks, and you can see the network name. I'm on the Ethereum mainnet right now, and you can see my RPC URL is mainnet.infura.io. So I should assume that when I'm using this to connect to the Ethereum network, I'm using Infura, I'm using software developed by consensus. So they are, consensus is tracking my IP and my wallet address from this endpoint. Now, if I was to use something else, like let's say I'm on the Songbird Canary network, now I'm on a completely different URL endpoint, different RPC. And this is, you know, we're everything, we're different terms and conditions, different, different, everything's different here. So you're always going to have to do some amount of research into each project and what they track. So those are the three solutions I can think of if you're worried about being your IP address being tracked. One, use a VPN, one that doesn't track and log your activity. Two, uh, use a different wallet. Just make sure you read the privacy policy of that hot wallet and do not make hot wallets your primary source of self-custody. Always use a cold storage wallet. And three, you could switch your, your uh, RPC URL to someone else besides Infura, which is owned by consensus. That's it. And then if you're a developer, you can always uh, monitor and look into what's happening in the MetaMask GitLab repository. All right, everyone, I hope that helps. I hope that puts you at ease a little bit. I'm still going to use MetaMask for some stuff. Not really stressed out about it. When I first saw this coming down, I was a little bit concerned. Now that I've done a little more research, yeah, kind of whatever. But uh, because I don't use this as my primary self-custody solution and I use a VPN. So that's all. Hopefully you find some value here. If you did like the video, please subscribe. 
follow me at DeFi Divi on Twitter. And um, I will talk to you all soon. I hope you have an amazing day. Okay, bye.